What's going on guys? Brian Fonseca, Aaron Breitner here for On The Banks here at Madison Square Garden in New York City where we just watched Rutgers defeat Minnesota 65-54 in the first round of the Big Ten Tournament. Uh, second straight year Rutgers wins as the 14th seed. Never happened before. Uh, Aaron, what did you take out of this win for the Scarlet Knights? I think it just shows the heart of this team. I think, uh, we listen, we know what they are right now. We know that they're, they're deficient in talent. Um, but I think, you know, with, with the, the way they ended the regular season, it, it would have been very easy for them to mail it in. Uh, and, and they didn't. And they, you know, I think that's what you saw from Minnesota uh, in terms of they just outwilled them. They outworked them. Uh, and, and the bread and butter of this team is defense and rebounding. And they, you know, dominated on the boards, plus 19 on the boards. Uh, you know, they held Jordan Murphy and Nate Mason to 23 points combined. They averaged 38, I believe, uh, combined on the year. So, um, you know, they did everything they had to do and it was a total team effort uh, you saw from the start. I think they had at least six guys with over four rebounds in the game um, and, and everybody contributed. Uh, Shaq Dorson gave him minutes, uh, uh, actually started and, and gave him quality minutes. So I think it was just, you know, it was great to see the heart of this team, the fight of this team. And, uh, you know, listen, they, they, they embrace the underdog role and uh, we'll see what they can do tomorrow. I think it's going to be key for them to come out strong at the beginning. Um, and, and to replicate that energy is going to be difficult. But I think, uh, hey, as frustrating as this end of the season has been, uh, it's great to see them get a win tonight, especially at Madison Square Garden with a lot of great uh, Rutgers fans here tonight. Uh, it was a great supportive crowd. I think you hit the nail on the head in the sense that they really did show their heart, and that's the strength of this team. Minnesota was a team that they wanted revenge against. They felt like they came up short. Uh, they did come up very short when they played in Minneapolis. Obviously, this Minnesota team is a bit different than that team they played. They don't have uh, uh, Amir Coffey. They don't have Reggie Lynch, uh, each for a variety of reasons. But um, Rutgers could have easily mailed it in. They could. They they'll need to win five straight games for their season to keep going. So they could have mailed it in. But they showed that this team plays every game for something, and they pulled it out. Uh, Corey Sanders had one of his games. Uh, it's, it always feels like it's become a joke at this point, but it's true that you either come in and expect Corey to drop 30 or he drops zero. You never mm -hmm. really know what you're getting out of Corey Sanders, and, and tonight he had a really good game. Uh, 23 points, six rebounds, I believe two assists and two turnovers, if that. Zero. Zero turnovers. Zero that's, turnovers. That, I'm glad you corrected because that's a big thing. It uh, is. Zero turnovers. Very clean game from him. And uh, it just felt like in this first half when that first step back jumper fell down that it was going to be his day. I think Corey's a really a rhythm player, really the epitome of that. Once he gets going in rhythm and he hits the shots, it'll just keep going. And you'd like to see his teammates kind of feed off that, but oftentimes it felt like Corey was the only guy who had confidence in himself to take the shot. That's something that Rutgers will need to uh, fix quickly if they want to be able to pull out a win tomorrow against Indiana. But it was enough today to beat a pretty beat down Minnesota team that Truthfully, did not seem like it wanted to be here. Similarly to the Ohio State team last year in DC, they just seemed like they just wanted this nightmare of a season to end. But Rutgers didn't, wasn't complacent, and they pounced on that, and that's the big thing. Going into Indiana, Aaron, what do you think is the big key, Rucker, the big keys rather, Rutgers needs to have to be able to uh, to get revenge again on Indiana, a team that they lost to earlier in the season? Well, I, th I think one key tonight that uh, has been a frustration for the last couple of years is, is they closed. You know, uh, Minnesota got within two points, I think, several times down the stretch. Uh, and actually, believe it or not, Rutgers closed the game with 9 out of 10 from the free throw line. Uh, I think that's a huge confidence builder. I think this team, you know, has the right mindset. They have nothing to lose going into Indiana. I think Indiana is, is not a bad matchup at all for them. I think that it was one of their worst games that, that they played this year. Uh, the beginning of the month at the rack, you know, we thought they had a chance in that game and they just laid an egg. Uh, it was two days after that emotional loss to Purdue, uh, which I think did play a factor. So. Uh, uh, obviously, this was an emotional win today, um, and I did co talk to Coach Pike after the game, and I, I asked him, you know, how do you counter that? Do you talk about the Northwestern game last year? Uh, and, and, and he said no. He said he, he feels like, you know, this team's locked in, um, and the way they were able to turn things around from Sunday, and, uh, you know, they're, they're really in the zone. I think a big key for them is Mike Williams. I think you saw tonight he was laser focused um, and he really willed this team to win. He, he grabbed, of course, those key rebounds that he always does, seems to make at the opportune, uh, you know, the, the opportunity when they, they need it the most. Um, but I think for Indiana, they, they have to come out uh, fast. They, they can't get behind, they can't get down 10 points, you know, with 12 minutes to go in the first half. 
um, because it can unravel as we saw last year against Northwestern and I think we could see a, a repeat of that if, if they put themselves in that situation so it's going to be about effort energy outworking Indiana on the boards you know I we can't expect Rutgers to come out and shoot 50 percent tomorrow I mean they won this game shooting 39 percent so uh, you know they're probably going to shoot probably a little worse than that tomorrow so uh, you know they, they need to win the the, the boards uh, and, and they need to play great defense I think Indiana you know that they, they have some weapons but I think at the same time, um, you know, they don't have any star. I mean, I, in my opinion, Minnesota, I mean, the, the, uh, Murphy and Mason, two of the best players in the conference. So uh, obviously Mason did play with the flu tonight, but I think that, you know, that'll give Rutgers confidence as well. And I, I think that hopefully that experience of last year will, will benefit them going into tomorrow night. Agreed. I think uh, you hit the nail on the head again, Aaron, with uh, the point that Rutgers really beat itself against Indiana uh, earlier in that in, earlier in the season. Corey talked about that it wasn't anything that Indiana did. It was more so what Rutgers failed to do and that Indiana took advantage of. Mm -hmm. So that's something that they're thinking about. Uh, again, with the Northwestern, a lot of the players, uh, I talked to Mike, talked to Corey, talked to Eugene, they harped on the fact that it happened last year. They've talked about it. Uh, they even said that if you watch the video we posted on On the Banks, that uh, them coming off into the locker room, there was some celebration from some players. Mamadou was excited. Mike Williams, obviously, hometown guy, was very excited. But there was not, not too much of an excitement. They weren't overwhelmed with excitement. It was and more subdued. Very much more subdued. Yep. And they're, it seems like they're more focused and they're, not, they're looking to not be taken advantage of early on against uh, Indiana like they were against Northwestern. Indiana has a bit of uh, an extra incentive to beat Rutgers, given that if they win, they play Purdue, a team that they fell short of against at home in a, in a rivalry game. So they'll definitely want a second piece of Purdue. But uh, Rutgers has something to play for in the sense that they've never uh, gotten past this hump of the second round. They were here last year. Obviously, they fell to Northwestern, so they'll want to get over that hump. Uh, it's going to be an interesting game, and I do think that Rutgers has a chance. I don't think it's a game where Rutgers is going to be dead in the water. Uh, like you said, I agree. Have to come out fast and you can't expect them to outscore Indiana, so they'll have to come out fast, play tight defense, and, uh, and will that win. Um. I, I think the pack line defense of Indiana, you know, is going to be a problem. Uh, Rutgers has struggled against that defense all year. I think, you know, one thing that was interesting tonight is Rutgers had virtually no transition offense, and I think that they need that tomorrow night. I think that they need to force more turnovers. They only forced nine tonight. Uh, I think they committed 13, but they, they need to win that turnover battle tomorrow. They need to get points in transition. Um, and obviously, you know, second chance points of offensive rebounds, but, uh, you know, they can't rely just on their half court offense. And honestly, I, you know, I don't think Corey is going to be able to replicate the, the, the kind of one on one, uh, you know, uh, game he had tonight. Uh, Indiana is going to try to take that away from him, so somebody else is going to have to step up. And um, I, I think uh, they're going to need a team effort again. Again, with Corey, uh, similarly to Rutgers, uh, Rutgers has a lot of. Has seen, we've seen a lot Rutgers this season have a big win, come off a big effort and, and flop the next game. Uh, the same thing happens with Corey. He'll go from a 30-point game to zero. So you're never really sure what you're going to get. And Rutgers has to break that trend tomorrow against Indiana to have any chance of winning a game. They can't come out flat. They can't let themselves get beat by themselves. Uh, Aaron, so that'll be the end of our basketball coverage. But before we let you guys go, those who follow me on Twitter saw this controversy. Steve Pico was on the Jumbotron and he was asked what his favorite pizza toppings were and his favorite bagel and he said mushroom pizza and cinnamon raisin. I for one was appalled. I truthfully cannot believe that we can make one of those decisions let alone two. I was c corrected in the locker room in that a lot of guys told me their favorite was cinnamon raisin so I was surprised. Very odd. Corey Sanders said he doesn't like bagels. I guess it's a Florida thing. I'm not sure. He says they're too hard. He just doesn't. He just doesn't water. get it. It's the water. He's not. He's not used to the Jersey water. He doesn't get it. So uh, before I give my answer, I want to ask you, Aaron. One one pizza topping, one bagel. Kind of bagel. What do you go? What do you get? Uh, I go onion bagel and I go fresh garlic on pizza. I could respect that. Garlic is something I was not expecting. I, I don't think I've ever heard that, but I can respect that. I'll go with pizza. I'll probably go barbecue chicken, the one I get at Crispy Pizza. It's a little out there, but uh, I get one at least once a week. It's a must get. And for bagels, gotta go everything bagel. I think that's the one correct answer. I don't think uh, I don't think you could ever go wrong with an everything bagel. But uh, that, we'll wrap that up from here, from Madison Square Garden. I'm Brian Fonseca. This is Aaron Brightman for On the Banks. And we'll see you tomorrow here at 9 o'clock when Rutgers takes on Indiana. Till then, take care.